antiderivatives can be useful to compute integrals. We have to be careful though when branch points are involved. In this video, we'll see a few examples of integrals which can be done with a derivative, but we have to be careful with the branch cut. So, first example. Uh, our uh, curve C1 will be the unit circle, but only the right half of that. So, theta between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So, we go like this. Uh, and we will want to integrate the function 1 over z. We want to have a log of z. So, how do we define our log of z in this case? Well, the log of z will be the ln of the modulus of z plus i times the argument of z. We'll have a, where we have a capital A. Because we can put the branch cut on the negative uh, real axis nicely away from our contour. So that means that our argument of set will be between minus pi and pi. So after all this work, it's now easy to compute the integral because the uh, antiderivative of 1 over z equals the log of z, uh, endpoint i minus starting point minus i. So we get the i times the argument of i for the endpoint minus i times the argument of minus i for the starting point. At the end point, our argument equals pi over 2 due to this choice here. And at the start point, our argument equals minus pi over 2, also due to the choice of the, uh, the position of the branch cut. So we get the i times pi over 2 minus i times minus pi over 2 from this, ter this term. So we get total uh, pi times i. Now we put the circle on the other side, and again we want to compute uh, the integral. Where we uh, want to compute the integral from uh, i to minus i, like this. Okay, how are we going to do that? We cannot put the branch cut on the negative real axis, so we put the branch cut now on the positive real axis. So that means, we want to use the log later on, that our argument of z will be v between 0 and 2 pi. So our function log of z, now with a small l, will be again modulus of the ln of z, that's fine. And now we have items the argument of z with a small a, and the argument is now chosen between 0 and 2 pi. So as a consequence, the thetas on this circle will be between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So now we've done again the hard work, so we can compute the integral using an antiderivative. Integral of 1 over z dz equals the log of z between endpoint minus i and start point i, like this. So you get i times the argument of minus i minus i times the argument of i. But now the argument of minus i equals 3 pi over 2. Argument of i is again pi over 2, so you get i times 3 pi over 2 minus i times pi over 2 will yield a pi i. So if you join those two circles together, if you go fully around uh, once, you get the, the contribution from C1 plus the integral contribution from C2. So if you combine those two, integral uh, along the unit circle equals 2 pi i. Well, we knew that already. It's confirmed again in this example. Now, a third example involving a square root. So we want to integrate the square root of z. And our uh, uh, contour is not given. It's only specified that it's from z equals minus 3 to 3, okay, and that's somewhere fully be above the real axis. So the contour C looks something like this. Now we have a square root. Uh, we want to use an antiderivative, so we'll, uh, we have to define the log somewhere because power functions always involve log. So where do we put our branch cut then? Well, we start at zero. Uh, we know that our contour is above the real axis, so we can take our branch cut, for example, on the negative imaginary axis. Because in that way, we stay away from our contour and we are safe. So, how do we define the log? Again, small log of z equals the ln of the modulus plus i times the argument of z, where the argument is now between minus pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, which corresponds to the choice of the branch cut over there. And then we can define our square root function, z to the power 1 half equals e to the power 1 half times the log of z. So, now we've done again the hard work, and computing the integral will be now easy now. Because the integral from z from minus 3 to 3, z to the power 1 half, we can just use the antiderivative, 2 thirds times z to the power 3 over 2, between 3 and minus 3, 
Uh, so we get two thirds times upper boundary three. In three, we have as argument zero, so three times e to the power i times zero. And in the lower boundary, our argument will be pi, so minus three will be three times e to the power pi i, like this. And then we just uh, work out what we have the first time. It's easy. It's two thirds times three to the power three over two, so three times the square root of three, first term. For the second term, we have to be a bit more careful. Of course, again, the minus two over three times the three times the square root of three, that's the same. But then we have e to the power i times three over two, so we get this factor. And uh, three pi i over two equals minus i. So that we get from our, for our first term, just two times square root of three. And for our second term, here we have a minus i times uh, two times the square root of three, so the times the minus one. So we get two times the square root of three times i. So you see, you can use antiderivatives even if branch cuts are involved. But if branch cuts are involved, you just have to be careful to place the branch cut such that it doesn't intersect your contour. You have to uh, uh, make sure that the contour is somewhere, or the branch cut somewhere else, so that you avoid Due, uh, with your contour, your branch cut, like in the examples in these videos.